Lily and the rusty raconteur returned from the quiet night of the Black Lake Nobles Quarter into the equally and eerily quiet interior of the Melanin Estate. They were ready to proceed into the West Wing, where Grauman had talked of prisoners and little mean people with wings. Unsurprisingly, the West Wing doors are locked. No matter, Lily has the key. She also has a resistance spell memorized for her artful dodger. So far, it's been nothing but nasty imps, two-foot snapping beetles, and witless half-orcs. At least surprised they haven't encountered any of Mendelin's private guard yet, which is why she's not surprised to see that Bones returns not alone. <laughs> it looks like uh, Bones has brought some company. Holy cow. Two guard dogs. All right. All right, crew. Let's take them down. Well, I guess she'll uh, back up a little bit. All right, looks like just the two. Rod of Frost. The first door of the West Wing. What's behind it? Prisoners behind bars. Little mean people with wings. Grauman's twin brother. All right. <laughs> Some fire beetles and what's probably, yeah, a storage room. I think Bones can handle this by himself. If he can reach. Yeah, here's another one. Now just wait right there. And don't move a muscle until I say. <laughs> Lily insists that the Black Lake Bards smash open each fire beetle belly. Although unlikely, just in case it ingested something valuable. She sometimes even helps by pushing the gore aside with the toe of her boot, looking for anything shiny. Cat's Grace. Only 150 more to go. Wait. Did you hear it? Lily did. A door. She's surprised to see, though, that apparently nobody else did. The door at the end of the hole was not open a moment ago. 
Something is afoot. You just follow me and stay close. She sets bones to investigate. Yeah, sure enough. Melton and guard. The store was not open before. <laughs> Don't believe it. All right, I think he's heard bones. All right, crew, let's take them down. All right, run a frost. Well, this is convenient if they're all going to come to the door single file. <laughs> Alright, there's quite a few of them, though. The guards assuredly dispatched and bones sated on a ghastly digit or two. It's safe for his mistress to approach. Meldenin must be one of the wealthier nobles in Black Lake indeed, judging by the gear his private guard has equipped. Long swords and breastplate, longbowmen and chain and guard dogs too. If only he had spent as much on their training. The quarters reek as if the men hadn't bathed for a month, only washing their mouth out with the master's good favor, some local stout. And the stink of dog. Lily's not sure which is worse. The men. Without a doubt, the men. Boy, look at that. Guard dog all the way out in the distance. Yeah, I think she just wants to make sure everyone's here. All right. I'm surprised I hasn't seen her yet. Rod of Frost, just to catch its attention. Here we go. Another door of the west wing. What's behind it? Prisoners with wings. Little mean people behind bars. Who knows what Grauman was talking about? So Meldon and keeps a prison after all. Creatures for his experiments like the badger. And Formosa said he kidnaps people for them too, but what would he want with Samuel? Why imprison a militiaman when you could just snatch some vagabond from the beggar's nest? Lily grips the large wrought iron prison key in her hand, impressed by its size. 
and taking a kind of pleasure in the power such a tiny thing grants to its bearer over another. Two hundred gold. That's what Captain Theron promised her for his return, unharmed. Certainly worth the turn of a key, but she's certainly not going to escort this halfling to the board laid bare. Pleased to see you. Alright, of course, this is Samuel. Member of the militia that's gone missing. What's this? Am I finally to be rescued, or are you another of the wizard servants? Alright, <laughs> thought it was obvious that he was a prisoner here, but I guess asking if it's Samuel. It is. My name is Samuel, an inspector for the city guard until that mad wizard took me prisoner. Or mentioning Captain Thurin. Tis good to know he didn't abandon me. I was almost afraid that, well, never mind. Thank you for coming to release me. Yeah, I think Lily well, liked all the information she could get. Asking how he ended up to be a prisoner here. I was just poking around the estate, actually, looking into some rumors I'd heard of Meldon acting even more strangely than usual. I didn't find anything, but it appears I was correct. Meldon captured me and ranted on about how I was trying to steal something from him. I have no idea what he was talking about, but he seemed convinced that I was up to no good and wouldn't let me go. Yeah, it seems awfully bold to have kept a member of the militia prisoner. I don't know. Meldon and wouldn't ordinarily do this. Lots of other things, perhaps, but not take a guard hostage. I don't know what he's up to. Or ask him about the estate. I don't remember much. The West Wing here seems to be used mainly for Meldon's experiments and storage. I think he lives below. Yeah. How would we get below? The way to the lower floor is at the end of the hall through a room on the right. Alright. Or assuming he's going to make his own way out. Thank you, madam. I'm sure I can find my way out of here. Only wish I could take revenge on that damnable wizard. Once you leave this place, seek out Captain Thurin. I'm sure he'll want to thank you for finding me. Fare you well. Yeah, she's not going to forget that. I believe he owes her some reward money. So Melton was worried Samuel was trying to steal something from him. No doubt the Dryad. Under her enchantment, he must be insanely possessive. Good. Lily's task made all the easier. The sorcerer and the dryad will be found together. And Samuel said he went to his living quarters below. They must both be there. Experiments. What a fool. All Lily sees is a zoo. A badger on one side and an empty cell on the other. Little Red hears Lily gasp. All right. <laughs> I think she thought that this uh, prison cell was empty, if not even a prison cell. Whoops. Lily was about to berate Little Red for fishing through crates inside a prison cell until she heard the coins clatter in her hand. If the goblins were allowed to sit on a bit of wealth, who knows? Perhaps the badger has a small fortune to match.
confident there's no unreported Neverwinter militia halflings unknowingly hiding behind crates in the other prison cells, able to be rescued for 300 coin per head. Lily and the rusty raconteur proceed back into the hall, and even deeper into the west wing of Meldenin's estate, to stop at yet another door. What could be behind it? Perhaps Grama knew a thing or two after all. Could it finally be the little mean people with the wings? Grama's twin sister? <laughs> Alright, that was a bit of a surprise. Looks like guard dogs in probably another storage chamber. I'm sure she has line of sight. Rod of Frost? No, forget it. Now just wait right there and don't move a muscle until I say. <laughs> Lily finds a bundle of plain arrows and clumsily adds them to her already growing collection, wondering if she'll ever really need them. She never even had a chance to test the bow's quality at the academy. Fox is cunning. Only 149 more to go. Lily doesn't wear a back quiver like most archers. She couldn't possibly be bothered with the strain of reaching so high behind her every time she needed a silly arrow. Instead, she has a bow quiver, one that attaches to the bow itself. Quite convenient, she thinks. You just follow me and stay close. But not as convenient as the black leg bards. Her short bow requires no quiver at all. With every draw of the bowstring, a new arrow is simply conjured out of thin air making Lily jealous.